I call Phil Twyford. Katangi te titi, katangi te kaka, katangi hoki aho, tihe i mauri ora. Te whara e tu nei, e te iwi e tu nei, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. It's truly a privilege to contribute to this third reading today of the Ngāti Whātua Orake Settlement Bill. As an Auckland MP and our party spokesperson on Auckland issues, I want to put a few comments on the record. I want to add my welcome to those Ngāti Whātua who have travelled here today to be here for this very auspicious occasion. Tēnā koe Joe, tēnā koe Danny, Grant and others. I was 15 when I listened on a transistor radio to news reports of the police and army moving on to Bastion Point to remove the occupation. I was shocked that this could happen in our country. Ten years later, I reported for the Auckland Star on the Waitangi Tribunal report on Orake. The report shocked me. And I think that all Aucklanders, if they read the Waitangi Tribunal report, would be shocked to know the story of Orake. The fact that the Crown's, by the Crown's actions, Ngāti Whātua were virtually landless by 1885. And to quote the Tribunal, the cumulative effect of the various breaches of the treaty was to render Ngāti Whātua of Orake virtually landless and without standing in their own homeland. Through political, legal and bureaucratic means, Efforts by Ngāti Whātua to hold on to their lands were frustrated decade after decade after decade. In 1911, an eight-foot-high concrete pipe was built the length of the Okahu Bay foreshore, pumping Auckland's raw sewerage onto the shellfish beds of Ngāti Whātua. And then in 1951, the compulsory acquisition and forced clearance of the marae at Okahu Bay. That was not our country's proudest moment. And these kinds of things are not unique to Ngāti Whātua and Auckland. In many ways, they are the story of our country's modern history. And I believe that we're lucky as a nation that the patience and goodwill Ngāti Whātua have shown since British settlement are not unusual among hapū and iwi everywhere. We are lucky also that Ngāti Whātua, led by Joe Hawke, occupied that prime piece of Auckland real estate, Takaparafa, or Bastion Point, in 1997, and for 507 days appealed to the conscience of New Zealanders. And the occupation drew support from all kinds of people, and I'm proud to say had strong support from the unions and the political left. And I say we are lucky because that occupation, as the Minister said, inspired change in this country. It opened the eyes of Pākehā New Zealand to the injustice of land loss and treaty breach. And I'll always be haunted by the images in the late Merita Mita's film, Bastion Point, Day 507, of New Zealand police officers carting Komatua off the marae and a bulldozer demolishing the occupation's buildings. It was part of a wave of activism and protest that paved the way for a new era of reconciliation towards expanding the writ of the Waitangi Tribunal and treaty settlements. But it came at considerable cost to Ngāti Whātua. Joe Hawke's generation, like those before, paid a personal price. And during the occupation, the Hawks lost their little girl Joanny in a fire, and I want to acknowledge her parents, Alec Hawke and Meadow Cooper, who are in the gallery today. It's remarkable to think about the transition from those days of protest in the 1970s to today, where Ngāti Whātua is a significant player politically and economically and culturally in modern Auckland. It was Ngāti Whātua who led a protest by many thousands of Aucklanders who marched on Queen Street in 2009 demanding Māori seats and a more democratic Auckland super city. That is leadership. Tēnā koe This settlement 
will formalise and boost what has been underway now for many years, the development by Ngāti Whātua of their economic base and their emergence as an economic force. Our city needs a strong Ngāti Whātua. We have so many challenges. Building an economy that delivers the jobs our young people need, making a vibrant city that attracts our brightest and best, and protecting our stunning natural environment, the Gulf, the Maunga, for future generations. And perhaps the most important challenge is unleashing the creativity and the talents of the young generation of Māori and Pacifica who are becoming such an important demographic in the new Auckland. Ngāti Whātua is uniquely placed to help the city meet that challenge. And this settlement sets the platform for that to happen. I want to say to Ngāti Whātua on behalf of Labour that we support your exercise of self-determination. As mana whenua, to have a place to stand and the resources to sustain your people in the 21st century. The settlement will, without doubt, change Ngāti Whātua's relationship with the Crown. And I understand that renewed energy and resource will go into economic advancement, jobs, education, housing, cultural and business opportunities for the iwi. It is an exciting moment. Today, Bastion Point remains a sublime place. It is still an extraordinary piece of real estate. But more than that, it is a permanent reminder of a people who resisted, who endured and never gave up, who got an apology for past wrongs and a recognition of 170 years of injustice, and built from that an ambitious and optimistic future for their children and their city. I want to thank all of those who've worked to bring this settlement to fruition, including the Minister, but also officials and politicians, both in this government and the one before it. I especially want to pay tribute to all those Ngāti Whātua over the generations who worked tirelessly to keep alive the dream of a people and their land. This settlement vindicates their efforts and marks a new beginning. Nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa.